Hello, I'm meteorologist Rob Carmark here with a forecast for this upcoming weekend in Northern California. Now, uh, you might have heard in the news about the recent avalanches that we've had in the area. Yes, I said plural because we had one inbounds at Palisades Tahoe uh, and then on the other valley over, which is known as the Alpine Meadows side, there was also another inbounds avalanche. Now that one, fortunately, uh, there were no injuries, no deaths, uh, there were no one swept up in it. But it tells you the baseline conditions about what's going on with the snowpack and some of the concerns as we move into a new storm, which is going to arrive into the weekend on basically on Saturday, and then we should be all clear on Sunday. Now, know the environment that this storm is going into. We've had some pretty sizable uh, snow amounts over this past storm, well over a foot or more for many places. If anything's reading low, it might just be a low spot where the wind blew away some of the snow, uh, but very sizable amounts. Uh, recently and then we've had a couple days off so a lot of that snowpack has been able to settle it's had a bit of sunshine on it a little bit of wind in between but overall getting ready for the next storm now this is what it looks like this satellite image was taken on thursday in one of the clear spots between the storms if you took this image today on friday you'd see a lot of cloud cover so it would be difficult to pick out what was snow versus say clouds at any rate uh just showing you the cold intensity of the recent storms is that sure, you expect to see some snow in the Sierra, which is right here. There's Lake Tahoe for some reference, Pyramid Lake in Nevada. Uh, but it gives you some perspective that we've seen a whole bunch of cold air all throughout the West. So lots of spots in Nevada, Utah, Arizona, also getting these cold storms and snow as well. You could also see the extent how low it is and where it's sustaining itself. Sometimes you get low snow, then the next day, it starts to warm up and it starts to recede. But this is what we're looking at. We've got plenty of snow on the ground, but one of the issues is that the storms coming in have been very cold, but just not that moist. We've been not getting Sierra cement, which is a heavy, wet snow. We've been getting light, dry snow. And skiers and snowboarders love this, but what ends up happening is two things. Number one, uh, you get a lot more inches out of the liquid. This is called a snow ratio, one inch of precipitation uh, when it's snowing in these environments ends up being upwards of 15 inches of snow, if not more. So it's a lighter, drier snow, which again is great to ski or snowboard through, but also it's very uh, subject to blowing around because it's so light and dry. You can get a lot of wind loading. It can be uh, unnaturally put in places where normally if it was heavier and wetter, it might be move around and more easy to settle. So there's a lot of other things that happen in environments with a light, dry snow. Now, just to point out that you've probably seen we've been getting our storms, but it's all been adding up to well below average for each region and statewide. We're still well below average for snow. Remember that satellite image I just showed you? It looks like we have plenty of snow, but the actual water in the snow, which is something they really use to equate uh, how much water we're going to have available in the spring melt and then further on in the summer, there's just not that much water in the snow. Now, getting back to the avalanche conditions going into the weekend, we've got your forecast from the Sierra Avalanche Center. These are the people that do this literally every single day. Skiers and snowboarders and snowmobilers and people that are going uh, to use uh, snowshoes, people that recreate in the backcountry, use this to try and figure out the general risk. And it's based off weather. It's based off observations from themselves and many others that contribute to basically a grand sum of knowledge this is what we're seeing, this is what we're observing, and a huge network of sharing. And I'll show you one of the reports in just a second. So this is what they have for Friday, and then with the incoming storm and during the storm, it's now gonna be rated a high, basically a four out of five because of the additional new snow, because of the additional strong winds, and underneath the surface, basically what all this snow is laying on top of is what they call a persistent weak layer. Now. They have pinned this one layer down to right around January 2nd. Essentially, it, the further you dig down deep, it's like going back in time. It's almost like snow geology. And the, the, the more you dig down, you can go back to the first snowfall and then the other ones. And then what they've seen, and this is from one of the observations from someone who went in the backcountry and observed this, took a photo, reported it back to that website. Uh, you could see that this is a natural slide. Basically, in this environment, for whatever reason, whatever triggered it, and there's multiple different ways that they could trigger it, uh, all of a sudden this whole column of snow was on the move, sliding on what they call a weak layer. Now, it's a, it's a difference in snow texture. Uh, it could be related to weather, the types of snowflakes. There's a couple different things that go into that, 
but basically think of it as stacking a bunch of big heavy library books on top of a layer of sugar. And at some point with the angle and the pitch and something to jostle it, all of a sudden you can imagine at some point all of that is gonna move at once. So these are some of the things that go into the heavy snow forecast for Northern California with those avalanche concerns. Very quickly, I do wanna wrap it up here in a second, but just highlighting that a lot of the snow coming in is just in this broadly colder environment. Earlier in the season, we had all sorts of weather, which really does contribute to the complexity of the snowpack and trying to pin down some of these avalanche conditions, the precursors, because we've had lots of dry periods. We've had heavy, wet snow. We've had rain. We've had very cold temperatures. Uh, and we're looking at two things. Number one, it's just going to be heavy snow straight up. One to two feet of what I call past level snow. That's right around 7,000 feet. So in and of itself, it is going to be a heavy snow event along with some strong winds. But they're issuing an avalanche watch ahead of this upcoming storm. This means that conditions are prime, that when it comes together, we're looking at uh, the weather and the base conditions where we could be looking at avalanches more or an environment more prone to avalanches with this storm. And this goes uh, all the way until Saturday morning. And then we're probably going to see this switch over into an actual avalanche warning, meaning the conditions are happening and everyone should uh, uh, take heed. One extra point of, of distinction, because I think that this is really important. Let me go back to this because I think using the Sierra Avalanche Center backcountry report here for conditions, this is not exactly what you're gonna see in an inbound ski area in environment. This is for the general snow conditions across a region and it's based on elevation. It's also based on which angle of the slope that it's in, also the steepness of the slope. In other words, if you are gonna venture out during this storm at lower elevations where it, they can open some terrain, or even in the day immediately afterwards, some of these conditions might be very different situationally dependent on what you're skiing. The lower angled slopes are gonna be much safer than the higher angle slopes. That makes sense, doesn't it? Because the higher angle, it's just much more difficult to maintain that snow and that stickiness at lower elevations. It's gonna be much more difficult for that snow to move. Also, inbounds terrain for some of these ski areas, they have very active avalanche control. They are going to have ski patrol. They are going to have snow cats. They are going to have snowmobiles. They're going to have explosive charges. They're going to have what they call ski cutting, where they actually have patrol people go across some of these well-known avalanche-prone uh, slopes and try and cut it. They're going to try and trigger it. They're going to bounce on it. They're going to observe it. They're going to do bun a bunch of th things that they do all the time to really nail down and try and trigger in advance anything that could be avalanche prone. So if you have some concerns, just know some of the best uh, trained ski patrollers and people that look and basically mitigate, mitigate avalanche terrain and conditions, uh, they're gonna be out there all weekend and they're gonna be doing their very best. It's just in some of these very obscure situations, uh, which is some of the things that you've seen recently in the news. One final note on top of a final note, uh, there has been two inbound avalanches with consequences, so it is worth taking all of this advice and all of this information and understanding the environment that the Sierra will be in for this upcoming storm and immediately after.